Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to today's video, which is a spoiler free book review of All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. Um, I'm going to first talk about the book. We'll do that. And then I will explain my rating and my review. So essentially, this book is about a woman named Margot, who is a journalist in a larger city. She comes from a smaller town in a more rural area. And she has a very com complicated relationship with her parents. Um, they're fairly estranged right now, but she had a very close relationship with her aunt and uncle. And her aunt has passed and her uncle is currently experiencing onset dementia. So Margot has decided to leave the city for a period of time to go back and take care of her uncle. Now, there is a bit of a history for her in this town. Um, she had friends. She was five years old. She was friends with a little girl her same age across the street who was kidnapped and murdered. So in returning to this town, the murderer was never identified. Margot feels a lot of the memories and emotions being stirred up just by being back there. Then what's going to happen is in a nearby town, she is going, there's going to be another kidnapping. Um, and this is going to trigger in Margot the belief that the kidnappings and the murder are connected and that um, more is going on that the town has not disclosed. I'm going <laughs> to, you guys may be able to already tell from my reaction. <laughs> I really struggled with this book. Um, this was a one star for me. So that means I did not care for the book and probably didn't even finish reading it, which was the case at 100 pages. Let me talk about why. So first of all, I found a lot of the interactions with the main character to be very forced, um, to be very fake. For example, Margot decides to go back to the father of the kidnapped, her old friend, um, when she was five years old, who had been kidnapped and murdered, to discuss with him, um, essentially to interview him uh, for her for her own interests. And uh, the way that the father and her interact seemed completely unrealistic to me. And this wasn't the first conversation that felt this way. It was just the uh, biggest one that I was like, oh, there's no way. There's no way um, that given what he said and how this man has kept to himself, that he would all of a sudden be acting this way with her. It just felt completely off. The other thing that really I struggled with a lot is Margot seemed to draw these conclusions that made absolutely no sense to me. So for example, the murder of the girl, the kidnapping of the girl originally from the town nearby she said she she immediately drew the conclusion they were connected, but there was legitimately no evidence to draw that conclusion. In fact, even her own company, when she submitted a journal article, said you're stretching things and she continued to do so. Um, there was another example where there was writing on a barn of the father who she had interviewed, the father of her old friend who had been kidnapped and murdered years before. And she immediately believed this to be evidence that this the person who had kidnapped her friend was back in action when it could have so easily have been teenagers. That was like the first thought that went to my head is just teenagers being teenagers. Um, so many other options. It could have been just a copycat or someone just attention seeking, you know, a troll, so to speak. I, it just really was hard for me to follow along and feel like I could even the book just did not feel believable. I So I decided at 100 pages to jump into Goodreads and look at the reviews because I was like, I you know, before I DNF, a lot of times I do that. It had really high reviews, which shocked me. So then I started reading them and I found out I did not know this. I, I don't follow a lot of podcasts, but Ashley Flowers is actually a true kind podcaster. So I don't know if her fan base was driving the reviews. I, I personally, as just a reader, did not find the book to have a strong, um, it had an intriguing plot for sure as a thriller, but it wasn't carried out in a way that I felt was particularly well done. And I always feel horrible saying that. Um, the other thing that really just drove me crazy with her is she seemed to have trouble just negotiating her own adult life which felt really bizarre and out of place given her success at her job. 
Uh, so for example, you know, she had to sublet her apartment to leave and she essentially did not confirm and clarify doing that. And that was just kind of left hanging out there that this tenant that she had got gotten for her sublease had not actually committed or shown up yet. She just walked away from it, assuming he would. It, it just didn't strike me again as there was a lot of illogical components that weren't explained, that didn't seem to be a clearly innate part of this character's development. So it left it kind of like very odd and feeling out of place. Um, another example, she continues to talk about the guilt when she'd go off to investigate leaving her uncle, who has pretty progressive, it seems like, early onset dementia to the point where he is getting confused. He is leaving the house. And I was just shocked at her continued guilt, yet her continued leaving him for hours and hours uh, rather than finding a caregiver, finding a neighbor who could sit with him, um, taking him somewhere for an activity that may be appropriate for people with early onset dementia, some resource in the area. There were just so many things that it shocked me that she wasn't doing. And again, these these didn't seem to be explained well. And in fact, I found several of my issues in people's reviews. Those that did leave a more negative review were citing the same things I was experiencing. When I did decide to call it, because usually if I'm feeling that way, but the book has high reviews, I say, okay, maybe there's something redeeming at the very end. I read a lot of comments that the ending just kind of left you hanging, where it, there was a lot of like, eh, kind of stuff. And at that point, I said, you know what, I'm not even gonna, <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. So definitely a one star read for me. Um, I would love to hear, though, from people that did, if you have actually read this book, um, you know, what did what did you think? Uh, I noticed a lot of her her community, part of the podcast community, commented on similarities between the murder and Jean Ray Benet, Jean Benet Ramsey. I think was was the girl's name. Um, I did not. That seemed like a stretch to me. Again, I'm not a, a true crime fanatic, but other than the girl in the book that was murdered being in those uh, beauty shows for like the little ones where they have a lot of makeup on and stuff, uh, that was a similarity, but. A lot of the other circumstances seem to be different. So I was really surprised by that as well. So I don't know if there's more here that I was just missing. Again, like I said, because I'm not um, a really big part of the true crime community. So there may be facts I'm just unaware of. But very curious about this book because it's very unusual to me where I come into a book and it's like one star and I see these massive amounts of high star ratings. So I would love to hear from people that have read this book <laughs> what you thought. So that is it. This is a library book, so it will not be going into my Macari shop. But I do have links below if, you're, if you are interested in purchasing it. Maybe you're a fan of um, true crime in particular or the podcaster and you want to get the book despite my review. And again, our opinions are our own. So lots of people may truly enjoy this book as Goodreads did indicate. So that is it for today's video. As always, thank you for being a part of my literary life. Thank you for watching and let's go read some more books. Happy reading.